Well, coming up on today's show, how fast is too fast when it comes to rapid charging? The answer, of course, is not fast enough. Honda's wireless vehicle-to-grid experiment and that Tesla semi-truck, the Black Mat one, makes another appearance. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. It's Martin Lee here. Welcome to EV News Daily. It's a Friday, the 14th of December, weekend around the corner, and I've been through every EV story I can find today. These are the ones I think you need to know about. Thank you very much to myev.com for helping make this show. You know, they've built the world's first marketplace all about a electric vehicles. There's no need to sift through a ton of fossil stuff that you're not interested in on myev.com because every single car you find will be purely electric vehicle and it's a free marketplace as well. You can use it to research and learn about EVs too. Welcome to the Patreon gang, Bruce. Hello mates, Bruce Miller has joined us as a producer of this show. And if it wasn't for the producers of this show, I would be an idiot with a microphone talking to nobody. So thank you very much for all of the Patreon supporters. We'll start with a question of how fast is too fast when it comes to fast charging. And the answer, of course, is not fast enough. Even with today's news that a prototype of a new charging station has been unveiled, the charging capacity of it is 450 kilowatts inaugurated today in bavaria the ultra fast charging station for evs was created as part of a new project to demonstrate charging times and how low they could be in fact three minutes to add 100 kilometers of range maybe 15 minutes to get a pretty full state of charge up to 80 percent and be on your way the research project called fast charge was being run by a consortium led by bmw but including a lego phoenix contact e-mobility and porsche and siemens as well the increase in charging capacity up to 450 kilowatts which is from sort of three to nine times as fast as current fast charging stations enables a substantial reduction in charging times. Fast Charge is investigating the technical requirements needed to meet EV charging to be super fast and in order to meet the demands of that high capacity HPC charging high power charging cables had to be made that's what Phoenix Contact did they make these liquid cooled charging cables. They're CCS cables they use cooling fluid in an environment friendly mixture of water and glycol allowing the cooling circuit to be open rather than closed. It makes maintenance comparatively straightforward compared to hermetically sealed systems that use oil to keep charging cables cool in terms of like that cooling liquid. And I had no idea that that was even an issue when it came to HPC chargers. Of course, you've got to keep the cables cool and... Of course, maybe that comes with maintenance as well. All these things I'd never considered. Well, the Porsche research vehicle they were using with a net battery capacity of 90 kilowatt hours got a charging capacity of 400 kilowatts, just off the limit that it would have done at 450 on the charger. It allowed the charge time of three minutes, three minutes for 100 kilometers of range. If you pull up to the charger, you live 100 k's away. You get out, you plug in. By the time you've gone to get a coffee and you've come back, that's 100 kilometres added. That's incredible. How fast will fast enough be? The answer, of course, be it'll never be fast enough. I'm joking. I'm joking, of course. I'm joking before everyone emails me to say, oh, I think you'll find that seven kilowatt posts are the ideal solution for people who are parking for two to four hours if they're going into a supermarket or a bowling alley. Yes, I agree. There is indeed a case to be made for different charging speeds and the costs involved in those. I was simply being boisterous. <laughs> Let's move on. Honda is going to debut vehicle to grid wirelessly wireless v to g the bi-directional energy management system you know i'm obsessed with v to g anyway if you listen to last weekend's saturday special with mark from nuve they're a v to g specialist you know i was a total fanboy during that interview i'm so obsessed with it well recognizing that batteries in vehicles can also be used as big storage technologies to help balance supply on the grid and demand honda ev owners are going to be able to participate in a new program a v to g program program and receive compensation from their utility companies who benefit from the use of those honda evs to balance the grid's energy supply i'm not exactly sure what honda evs this press release is referring to 
they're hardly flush with models to try. But anyway, unlike charging with a cable, which you have to, of course, plug in... <sighs> That's so 21st century. Uh, the system enables non-contact charging and discharging of the EV battery. If you park reasonably accurately over the charging pad, you haven't got to be millimetre perfect. It makes the charging experience convenient for the customers, totally frictionless. Honda has developed the wireless V to G system with Y-tricity. They are the industry pioneer in wireless power over some sort of distance. The Honda wireless system is going to eliminate the gap, they say, between supply and demand of electricity by charging EVs when power generation is greater than consumption and by discharging electricity from the EVs to the power grid when you need to. I'll put a full link to that Honda press release that dropped into my inbox first thing this morning in the show notes if you want to read more. Well, Simon Alvarez at Tesla Artis spotted the Tesla semi truck being juiced up. This is the matte black version. This time around, the all electric long hauler has seen was seen at the 40 stall Kettleman City Supercharger between San Francisco and LA. The matte black prototype was photographed by Tesla enthusiast James Duma, and he noted that he spotted the vehicle on Wednesday afternoon. And in a conversation with Tesla Artis, he said that the vehicle was travelling alone. That's really interesting. Uh, as Tesla conducts road tests of the semi, uh, the company's been adopting a, um, a temporary charging solution for the semi trucks using a series of supercharger stalls connected to a hub. That hub then connects to the truck. I think they've been using six superchargers. Now, at the moment, superchargers are 120 kilowatt speed. We know that there's supercharger V3 being announced possibly even by the end of the year, by Elon Musk, uh, whereas the semi-truck is going to have to charge at much higher speeds, possibly a 1,000 kilowatts or more, which is why they're tying, at the moment, six of them together to charge it. I'll put a link to Tesla Arty in the show notes. Well, we've got another EV record here for the Laguna Seca track, according to Autoblog. This time it comes from a driver called Cameron Rogers. He modified his Tesla Model 3. Uh, you can see the video in the link below. He took it around the course in a rather white-knuckled, but very quiet, 141 and 28. Uh, that makes it the fastest ever EV lap, though the Model S holds the record for a completely unmodified, completely stock EV. Well, Mark Kane at InsideEVs.com has been updating the plug-in sales scorecard. In November, of course, these are estimates, but in November, Tesla sold in the US alone 24,600 EVs. And their Inside EVs estimations are freakishly accurate lately. How do they do it? Uh, which is the second best monthly result ever. Annual growth hit a remarkable... Get this, 592%. That's not bad, is it? Inside EVs estimates say that the Model 3 was 18,650, which I just think is brilliant because, of, of course, that's the size of the battery cell which started the Tesla story. But anyway, 18,650 Model 3s, Model X, 3,200, Model S, 2,750. That's a total of 24,600 uh, Teslas sold in the US last month in November. Well, the new generation of so-called clean diesel vehicles can now be banned from big cities like Madrid in Spain, Paris in France and Brussels as well after a ruling today in a very important European court. Let me explain. This is huge, huge news. Arguably, this could well have been the lead story on the podcast today. This is a report coming from the Guardian newspaper here in the UK. City authorities are now absolutely entitled to ban some of the most modern diesels being made. They're called the Euro 6 diesels. They're the so-called clean diesels that many car makers around the world make. And the Euro 6 diesels can now be banned from major cities. The European Court of Justice which sits very, very high up the legal chain here in Europe. The European Court of Justice have the power to overrule other decisions. Now, a decision was previously made by the European Commission. Now, the European Commission decided to allow diesel vehicles into those big cities, even though the cities wanted to ban them. The European Commission said, no, no, they're allowed, even though they emit very high levels of nitrogen dioxide. The European justices said that the original limit, which was always agreed, of 80 milligrams per kilometre, 
must be maintained and adhered to. The 20, 2016 relaxation of those limits that the Commission said they were going to do was in fact illegal and it's taken two years of legal battles to prove that. Those three cities took the European Commission to court over its proposal to allow much, much higher, over a, uh, like 168 milligrams of kilo, kilo per kilometre uh, limit following pressure from national governments. So uh, national governments, <coughs> the Germans, national governments, uh, those with a vested interest that need to just get the last out of their fossil engines before they fully move to EVs were pressurising the European Commission to try and allow those diesels to move into, uh, to drive in cities. EU law had previously set this 80 milligram limit. The decision that came today now means that any European cities that want to ban new diesel vehicles that exceed that limit are absolutely legally entitled to do that. It's been a long running case, but the results today are going to spark off a chain of events. No reason cities like London wouldn't go ahead and do that as well. European Commission overruled, clean air, here we come. Well, EV charge point reseller Raw Charging has teamed up with ChargePoint and uh, the Close Brothers Asset Finance Company to offer finance packages for fleets for smart energy vehicle chargers, according to Fleet World. And this is interesting because we would love lots of companies to convert their whole fleet to EVs. Of course, people doing it one by one in their homes is one thing. Fleets moving over to EV really cleans up the air in our towns and cities. And now there's another reason for them to do so. The move today enables fleets to have EV chargers installed in their car parks, but then spread the cost of that over five, over seven years, actually, through the funding. Now, the funding's coming from Close Brothers Asset Finance. Solutions are supplied from ChargePoint's range of chargers and offer software tools so that companies can look at the power and energy management, for instance, and a web portal that empowers businesses to effectively manage the time and the cost of charging. If that upfront cost previously was just too much, well, this solves it with a new finance deal. I've long said the opportunity is with fleets. Of course, people will do it in their homes and they'll get charges installed. But the, the big opportunity, the big business is going to be with fleets. And now this finance company coming in and saying, we'll give you five or seven years finance. Do your fleet now. Put the charges in and we'll finance it for you. This is huge news. Well, finally, a final story today sent to me by an EV advocate here in the UK and a very popular YouTuber who goes by the name of The Plug Seeker uh, tells me that a, a massive cargo ship just docked in the Chilean port of San Antonio a few days ago. It carried in its belly the first 100 electric buses coming from China and the Chileans hope that it's going to revolutionise their public transport system. According to the Sydney Morning Herald newspaper today, the operation and maintenance costs of an electric bus are so much smaller than fossil buses, 70% less than those in a diesel engine, according to the Ministry of Transport. Well, the Chilean president, Sebastian Piñera, said this, and I quote, Chile will be second only to China as a nation, with the greatest quantity of electric buses in the world. And we believe them as well. They're going big on EV buses. Of course, China. Nobody can touch China. 99% of all EV buses are in China. Uh, the Chilean capital, by the way, are going to have 200 EV buses in total. The 100 that just turned up on a container ship were made by BYD. If the present fleets of buses and taxis in all 22 Latin American cities were replaced, by the way, with EVs. If you did that by 2030, over the next 10 years or so, they would save 64 billion US dollars in fuel costs alone. 64 billion US dollars in fuel costs alone. And this is the thing that you know, I know, we, we need to remind people all the time. Okay, so maybe EVs are slightly more expensive at the moment than alternatives. The total cost of ownership is so much lower. EV servicing, what are you going to do? Check the tyres, check the brakes, check the battery health. There's no oil to change. There's no pistons to go wrong. There's no cylinder block that wears out. There's no spark plugs. Man, there's like a thousand other bits that aren't going to wear out. So this is huge news today. And again, the more we can get stinky buses off the road, the better the air is in our towns and cities for the children that are growing up in them.
Thank you very much to myev.com for sending us the question of the week this week. We turn the question of the week round to you so that you can turn it round to us and then sometime next year we'll turn it round to you again. Are you keeping up? I don't think I am. Uh, The question of the week this week is what's on your mind? What do you think in 2019 the question of the week should be? This is your chance to take over the podcast and you ask the question to the rest of the world listening. Send me an email, hello at evnewsdaily.com. That's hello at evnewsdaily.com. You can go to myev.com. Click on research at the top of the page and fill out question of the week or check out the feedback form on my own blog. There are now 132 patrons with Bruce's name added to the list, whose generosity means that we get to make this show, that you get to listen to it completely for free. Oh, we all love something for free, don't we? And if you want to join the gang, I would love to be reading your name out as well. Patreon.com, P A T R E eon.com slash ev news daily and for what is basically a super posh coffee once a month for ten dollars you get to support this uh, this mission that we're on there are 325 episodes on wherever you get podcasts from they're on youtube as well you can hit subscribe it means you get it first and free and automatically and if you want to leave a little review or a five star rating or a one star rating and go he's an idiot up to you uh you can please leave a review it really really helps me out with the kind of algorithms that recommend podcasts when they get good reviews in the meantime catch up on the socials by searching ev news daily have a wonderful day and i'll catch you tomorrow